Hey guys, welcome back to the Wildflower Podcast. Today we have a really special guest. She's going to give us all the practical tips today that we all really need. Mallory Shows is a mom, wife, and is the owner of Hello Happy Home, which is a DFW-based organizing company. I first met Mallory uh, about 10 years ago. Gosh, it's like been wow. forever. We're, I still feel young and then I like hear things I like know. that and I'm like 10 well, years ago. Oh my yeah. gosh. But we were both serving on the leadership team for our young adults ministry at our church. But we're so excited to have her here to talk through simple ways that we can organize our life, manage our home a little bit more seamlessly, how she started her business and also just her journey with the Lord because he definitely has taken her on a journey. We're all on a journey and we've all gone through good things and bad things. And so it's going to be cool to kind of just dive into your story a little bit and just have this conversation. So y'all welcome Mallory Shows. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited. So I, I think I met Mallory about 10 years ago, maybe. It was around the time you guys were close, but we met through Amanda and Steven. And so we got to meet again today and connect. I'm excited. Tyler's going to be hyped because she's like a savior in this house. <laughs> she's like, she comes into Type people's a. homes. So y'all need to follow her on Instagram. I love watching her Instagram stories because she documents going into people's houses and organizing things and decluttering. And the um, like your team, y'all go in there and y'all fully just like not like help people move and y'all... I don't know. It's amazing what y'all get done in like a half a day. I know. It really is. It's, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> amazing. So if you're local, um, I would definitely look at their Instagram. And she also posts tips and things mm-hmm. like that. Yep. So follow along with her there at Hello Happy Home. But um, but yeah, Tyler loves organizing. Yeah. I love uh, organizing. I don't love organizing, <laughs> but I need women like you surrounding me that yeah. help keep me going. But Ashton's a good delegator. I so am. she likes to hire people yeah, to listen, help her. I, <laughs> I feel like the Lord's got me. I'm good at staying in my lane. <laughs> you know, realizing like, okay, this is where I excel. This is where I need help. And that's the point of having, you know, the body of Christ. <laughs> We're not all heads, feet, hands, you know, truthfully. Yeah. And so I'm super excited to meet, I'm super excited to see you and meet you again, because I definitely think this is like a divine encounter because mm-hmm. I needed some help, but also just even meeting you right off the bat, I was like, wow, you are strong. Yeah. And I feel your strong spirit and strong people unite because <laughs> I, you know, I, I loved it when I met you because I'm like going or really have felt your spirit since you being here the past, like, you know, 45 minutes. I'm like, wow, you are strong. And I feel that presence all over your life. And we need the world needs more strong women. We're all strong in different rights, but I feel you have like a warrior spirit on you I and literally have like no joke. yeah like, I mean I, and I think that's yeah, why I felt like this is deep cries out to deep mm-hmm. I was like this woman even though we're we might be different yeah. personality type I'm like man you have that warrior anointing on you so tell us a little bit about your story your testimony your life and we can go into kind of what we were talking about before we even hopped on here just mm-hmm. because like I was just in awe of like your real authentic and raw you know just viewpoint on the gospel. Like you have a background in church ministry. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you're still standing. I know. <laughs> Survived. <laughs> I, sorry, you know, hate to say it, but I mean, you know, wow, that's a lot. I mean, yeah. even being in the confinements, we've mentioned a little bit on here about religion and it's like, I know for any type of person, it's suffocating, but especially those that are free spirits, wild ones, or people that carry that strong warrior anointing. Cause you're like, what is the point? Mm-hmm. And like, it does make you go, What's, what's the point of this, Lord? Mm-hmm. And so tell yeah. us a little bit about your story. Yeah. So I grew up in church. I think you said that earlier. Mm-hmm. Like I grew up in church, Christian home. Um, we were in the military. Or my dad was in, I wasn't in the military. My dad was <laughs> in the military. And so we traveled and moved every three years. So I've been to a oh, lot wow. of places, met a lot of people. Um, my Christian faith was like kind of a solid something I could stand on. I feel like in like the shaky, I travel and leave all the time. Mm-hmm. You leave people all the time. I like did Bible drill. Like I'm talking like I was a Christian. <laughs> You're a professional you Christian. Professional Checked all the boxes. <laughs> professional Christian. I had the thing in the back of the Bible with the checks and I would be like, I read Psalm 1. Check it. You know, professional organizer. Organized professional yes, Christian. 100%. That I was just makes water. me laugh at check mark oh, after Psalms. Yo, literally, if you go back to like my junior high Bible, it's like all of them. Like, it, you know, in the back of the books for like kids, it's like there's a check me. I oh, yeah. One, and I did them all. Like, I, 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 I did Awanas. Do you know what that like, is? Awanas. Oh, yeah. She didn't know what that was. On the March for Hey, what is hey, that? Hey, I, don't I don't know, know what that, what that is. is. The truth. It's a whole song. Okay, I don't remember you the song. A real Awana, I probably girl. wasn't, but I had the vest and the patches. <laughs> what is an Awana? Awanas was like a thing. Awana like, like felt Baptist like church. Was it? Yeah. I felt like a the Girl Scout kind of thing, but it was yes. like Christian. For and you would like, yeah, I never. I remember Girl sitting Scouts. on the island with my dad, like going over my memory verses, yeah, like Bible verses. You go each week. You'd have to memorize scripture. Yep. 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I wasn't a part of that. But <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's why I sit here like this today. <laughs> I was the rebel when I was six and seven and eight, there asking why do we do anything yes, yeah. all the time. Yeah. So we're like holding. I mean, y'all did Bible drill. Like it was oh, literally. Yes. I we have to flip to the Bible. I they would say they would yell out like a Bible uh-huh. verse, and you you'd have to see you could get there quickest. Everyone stands in a line, and you mm-hmm. hold your Bible like this, and they're like, First Kings twenty one, go." And we, I was so good at it that you, I knew where each chapter was and I could almost thumb a first Kings and open right to it, put your finger on it, then you had to read it. And then you also had to recite the ones you had to have memorized. So it's like drill sergeants out, like, of like, why you were reading it, trophy, like why trophies. you would read it. And I love how, like, she's kind of like you, I'm realizing it's like, I feel she her wants spirit to be the similar. best. <laughs> like I, but the competitive, like, more, um, I love that. She's like types. that. And I yeah. think that's what, like I said, when you walked in, I was like, whew. <laughs> I felt it. We, like, yeah. you have, we have different gifts, but um, yeah. yeah, I like to be the best at things. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, if I'm doing it, I'm going to win. If you're second, you lost. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, yeah. if you ain't first. It's like everybody. Ricky Bobby. If you ain't first, you're last. Yeah, right. But exactly. you know, I'm like here or I'm here. There is no, I'm either all in or I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. Yes. Why am I doing it? No, yeah. I'm not going to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm just not going to do it. So, yeah. you know, so organizing, not exactly. going to do it. Right. It's not for me. It's <laughs> not for me. Clean. Yeah. I hire a cleaner. I yeah. cleaner. Exactly. <laughs> I clean the toilet. <laughs> this is what I tell my husband. I can tell him that about you. Listen, I'm not an organizer. Look, even yeah. Mallory doesn't clean her own house. Okay. The toilets. No. <laughs> I mean, you know, so my, yeah, I mean, so I love that. So yeah, go on. Yeah. After, after so, being winning know, trophies for winning trophies for the Bible. <laughs> so professional Christian. I hope you don't do Bible drill anymore. Jesus. Help us. Tay doesn't do Bible drill. Yeah. I don't think that exists anymore okay maybe it I does there's parts know. of me they're like you know it's good to know scripture yeah I'm yeah like, i know scripture from that like it literally wasn't great to me so yeah. there's parts where they're good but whatever yeah moving on I little, didn't inti- little <laughs> intense um, so you know grew up in the church um christian home uh straight laced girl you know like my husband we joke all the time if we've been friends since high school like best friends since sophomore year in high school i've known mm-hmm. him for a really long time but he was like the crazy one partying and i was the straight laced girl that hung out with the partiers but you know was mm-hmm. never doing any of that these mm-hmm. were just my friends um and then went to college he went to a different college we met back up after college and he gave his life to the lord mm-hmm. changed became a different person and i was like oh i do like you and so we got married <laughs> um and we have three little girls that are our world. They're the most different that they could possibly be. Mm-hmm. Um, 11, 9, and 3. And three-year-old runs the house, as you would imagine. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, they're our world. But also, I was never, I just, I never grew up being the for girl that was like, I want to be a mom one day. Like, Me neither. Never, Same. All three of us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just was It was never part like, of it. But yeah, like, for sure. I was like, yeah, I'll have kids. But like, I even told her, I told him not too long ago. I was like... We did a client's home not too long ago, and she's like, my age, lives alone, single, in super cute house. And I was like, this is all just yours. And I had so much jealousy of like, <laughs> <laughs> this is all yours. You just get this house, and no one else touches it, and it's beautiful, <laughs> and I love it so much. And I told Brian, I was like, I was never the person that was like, I'm going to get married young and have kids. Yeah, same. And I did, but I was like, I wanted to be like, 35 years old and living in an apartment in New York City and like mm. having my own thing that was what I envisioned for my life like I mm. was working had my own thing Gosh, that was what wow. I thought it was see I, I I always planned to get married later and I was like I'm gonna get my career in order yeah. in music and songwriting and my mm-hmm. stuff and I was doing it yeah. um before I start a family or yeah. whatever or get married and then, um, cause I had this idea that like once I got married, like I wouldn't be able to travel right. anymore and do it the stops. stuff I was doing. <laughs> um, and that's not always the case, but actually that is what happened for me. It's mm-hmm. kind of crazy. Um, just cause of circumstances and yeah, it's just kind of wild how you envision your life one yeah. way. And then sometimes it's just totally, totally different, different path. Yeah. Right. And you know, there's good and bads to it. I mean, totally. like, sometimes I see, like I saw that girl and I was like, dang, I wish I had that. And I even told Brian, I'm like, I'm, I was sad when I saw that. Cause a part of me is like you know, a little bit of you dies. And I don't think there's like a bad to that. Like parts of Mallory had to die to have kids and be the mom that I need to mm-hmm. be and all the things. Yeah. But you know, you can grieve that a little bit of like, mm-hmm. oh man, I wish that, that was me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so that was not my story. And we mm-hmm. got married and we had three kids. And um, yeah, so what we were talking about before, maybe I'll jump into that. Yeah. So, you know, grew up in church, loved Jesus. And then we had two little girls and in 20... Um, 15 when my youngest was almost two I guess we had a miscarriage and never thought I would be the person that would be in the world of having miscarriages and um it rocked me a little bit to my core of like Mm -hmm. wait Jesus what are you doing how's this Mm -hmm. happening yeah moved on but I I mean I 
went through that pretty much unscathed. I was like, but Jesus, you're good, and I love you, God, and it's going to be great. It won't happen again. And then it happened again. Mm-hmm. And a year later, I lost another baby. I was like, okay, hold on a second. <laughs> What is going what on? What the actual bleep is happening? Oh, yeah. Because you told me that this wasn't going to happen again. I just felt in my spirit. It's like, no, God, I hear you. You know, that was a, you know, a test and I passed and I'm great. Mm-hmm. And then it happened again and it rocked me to my core. And it, that's where I would say it's like a crisis of faith of it went from, I tell people all the time, like there's a Mallory before I lost the babies and there's a Mallory after and they'll never be that person again. Like mm-hmm. sometimes I grieve that person who could just so casually be like, it's all going to be fine and. My brother was, I have one brother, um, younger brother, and he was way more the went crazy mm-hmm. and, you know, is not that way anymore, obviously, but went crazy. And I was the, always the strong one in the family who was like, my parents would freak out about things he was doing. And I would be like, it's going to be fine. Everyone on our knees in the living room, we're going to pray and we're going to get through this. Like that was who I was mm-hmm. for my family. I was strong like mm-hmm. that. And then this happened mm-hmm. and I feel like it was like, I can't be that person anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to be that person anymore because it feels so fake to like be like, I'm fine because I wasn't fine. Mm-hmm. Like I just wasn't fine. And so for years, I mean, so that was 2016. And then um, three for three years, I was like, well, then I don't know who you are anymore, God. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't know how to fight for you. I don't know how to be that person anymore. Um, and so I remember sitting, sitting on the bathroom floor. Brandon talks about this time all the time, like just crying and screaming. And I was like, he doesn't, he doesn't see me. Like he mm-hmm. doesn't love me because why like I'm asking for it mm-hmm. I've done all the things I've checked all the boxes mm-hmm. I know we're supposed to have another baby but it's just not happening like we were trying all the mm-hmm. things I love that you're saying all of this because I think a lot of times like people like I think there's such freedom in what you're saying because how many of us have felt these things mm-hmm. like in circumstances of going and we feel like we have to come before the Lord not angry or like, mm-hmm. oh, everything's great today. But like, yeah. I think it's such a cool reminder that he can hand or handle yeah. our disappointment and our, like, just where we're actually at. The authentic, yeah. like, my heart is being ripped out. Yeah. Like, and it's okay to like say that. You know what I mean? And I think that that's he can still love this Mallory just like he loved the other Mallory. Yeah, I think that was hard for me to come to grips too. It's like. But I was so pr- in my head, you know, I'm, if you do Enneagram, like I'm Enneagram one. So I'm like, <laughs> that's what her husband is. Perfection, <laughs> all the things I can't mess up. I can't do wrong. Mm. If I do something wrong, I'm less loved. It's like, that's how I perceive oh, yeah. it and how I hear it. So it's like in my head, that Mallory was so good and perfect and loved Jesus. This Mallory is sometimes mad at God and doesn't like reading her Bible. And so mm. it's like, well, then you can't love me because I'm not good anymore. Mm. So it's like, okay, well, then how do I, how do I love you? Mm. You know, it's like you can't, in my head, I don't know how to do both because it doesn't, mm. it doesn't line up anymore. It's like, well, good Christians read their Bible and they love Jesus and they don't complain and they don't say bad words. Mm. It's like well, what I'm doing. But see, that's like religion. That. That's yes, like the idea of a religion sure. a little yeah. bit. That's like, um, put this idea that like the good and the, what's good. Wh- and what's bad. Well, that, that this makes you more loved by yeah. checking the boxes. Yeah. That's actually not what a relationship with Jesus yeah. is. Yeah. Well, you know? and you know, it's interesting and, and super prophetic about what you're doing now is it's like, you know, as you were speaking, it's like the Lord, you're not designed. You're not created to be able to sustain the kind of pain you've walked. I mean, mm-hmm. we're not able to make things happen Mm -hmm. only God can make things happen yeah and only in his strength can you keep going so like an essential like there it sounds like in your life like you say the old Mallory and the new Mallory that was your spiritual death Mm -hmm. your actual spiritual death yeah right because you can accept Jesus into your heart and say hey you're good I believe in Jesus and become saved sure but to actually walk in the fullness of what Christ has called us to to walk in Mm -hmm. you have to die yeah like you think about like literally jesus was nailed to a cross to die for our sins Mm -hmm. he then he was raised so we could live an abundant life so when we're born again like truly born again baptized in the holy spirit Mm -hmm. like we die we die yeah our flesh dies it says you know we just talked about this earlier if you love your life you'll lose it and if you hate your life you'll gain it Mm -hmm. and it's like that right there is symbolic of okay who I thought I was, yeah. what I thought this life meant, what I thought Christianity meant, who I thought you were, God, all of that died. It's all mm-hmm. gone. It's yeah. all gone. And mm-hmm. you know what? Like for you being such a strong and capable woman, and I can relate to that so much because I'm a strong, capable woman. I made things happen in my life. Mm-hmm. A plus B equals C. Yes. 
A plus B equals C. It's not that hard. You work hard, you reap the benefits yeah, of it. Sure. And I'm going to, I'm going to be the best that I can be. Mm -hmm. But I didn't believe there was second best. I didn't believe that there was ever average. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have grace for yeah, myself, just sure. like you're saying, yep. to, to walk through that kind of pain. Because I was yeah. like, this is not okay to be weak. Mm -hmm. to, I have, I am yeah. strong. Yeah. I am strong. Yeah. And so the Lord was like, you're not strong. Mm -hmm. I'm strong. Right. You know, and yeah. to believe in that and believe what actually some of these scriptures meant, they actually came to life, you know, where it says, you know, where Paul talks about, you know, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Right. Therefore, I'll boast about my weaknesses. Therefore, mm -hmm. so you can be strong. I didn't understand that. Yeah. I was like, what does that mean, God? But mm -hmm. until I got to the point where I was like, I have nothing left. Yeah. I don't want to give you anything. But doesn't that make the scriptures come so much more alive than just hearing it in church? And getting a trophy? Day? Yeah. Or <laughs> yeah, I read trophy? it. Yeah, <laughs> I read it. I, I know it now. So yeah. it's like, I knew it. And like yeah. a pastor could stand on a stage every day and say like, his strength is made perfect in your weakness. And you feel it. Like you're mm -hmm. like, yeah. Like you go to a, you know, a conference and you're like, yeah, strength is made perfect in weakness. But then something happens and then you have to live it. And you're like. Whoa. Oh, wait, that, wait, that's what that means. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. Like, now, I can't get up today, God. Right. Now like, I can't different. move. Yeah. I mean, that's how I, f I mean, that's like, my weakness. I want to die. It, yeah. My weakness is I mm -hmm. don't believe you're good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my weakness is I can't go on another day. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of things that when you go through that kind of heartache and pain, then you start to get, then the enemy comes in and lies to you going, God isn't good. God isn't good. Yeah. He's not um, going to do it. Then you're confused you. about right. the God that you always knew or you right. thought you knew. But I we didn't know him good. in the first place. Yeah. Well, I'm told God is good. Yeah. But did I believe he was good? No. Yeah. Someone told me that. I became like autopilot. God is good. But what happens when these terrible things happen and yeah. you sit there and you weigh the, weigh the weight of, er, there's just the weight of why does this happen to me and not this person? Yeah. Why does m the things I love seem to die? And like we were talking about being unseen. I think yeah. that was my greatest cry mm -hmm. was that I am not seen by God. I'm not mm -hmm. loved by God. Yep. And, you know, and I started to read about Hannah and Rachel in the Bible who were barren and going, you know, some of the greatest favor were those women mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the Bible. And yeah. like, I, I don't know. It just really challenged me to go, okay, God, am I still going to pursue you when my life doesn't look the way I thought it would? Yeah. It did challenge me. I, I was mean, like, you don't look like I thought you, looked. you don't look mm -hmm. like I thought you looked. Yeah. It, I mean, all this I've been taught, is it fake? Right. Is it real? Yeah. Is now this my head an is illusion? Like a cluster and I don't even know what I believe anymore. <laughs> I mean, and it's amazing. That's why you have to silence the voice of the accuser. And I did, I would just be like, Lord, I'm just going to sit with you. And I mean, I, I told God I hated him. Mm -hmm. I told God I hated anything that had to do with Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I felt yeah. all of those things because I, there was the death of this God I, I thought mm -hmm. was real. But yeah. the reality is God wasn't created to make my life better or easier. Mm -hmm. Like we were trapped in this a human experience yes. in a fallen world full of pain, sickness, and it happened to me. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you don't think it's going to happen to you because I'm making things happen. Yeah. I'm doing the right thing. I'm, doing the I'm right checking thing. the boxes. I'm checking the boxes. <laughs> I go to church and a wanas. <laughs> so. and, and the lack of control <laughs> yeah. was a huge thing That was for hard me. for me. The yeah. lack of control in your own life. Yeah. But when God said, this isn't your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm in control. Yeah. I chose you. Yeah. You chose me. I mean, because, you know, I knit you together in your mother's room. I remember he spoke those scriptures over me and it's like, you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. And I remember going, I don't want to be chosen. Mm. I want to go back to ignorance. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've said yeah. that over and over again to her. And, and to this day, bliss. ignorance yeah, is bliss. True. I want to go back to where I was blind and deceived and the yeah. Lord's and, but, but then I don't, no. I can't, can't, I can't no. like, you know, and, and we've you talked can't. about this so many mm -hmm. times. I'm like, Lord, it'd be easier. Yeah. But now I know you Yeah. and I'm getting to know you. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, it's like, it's like sitting, it's like, relating God to your earthly father. It's like, does my father want bad things to happen to me? Yeah. Did my father, my earthly father make me barren? No. No. Did yeah. God make me barren? Yeah. No, I'm not barren. I have a daughter, but I'm saying this second hand and like, is this God's fault? No. Is this my earthly father's? I mean, I would relate it to that because I'm over here going, yeah. God, why am I blaming you mm -hmm. when just because you're all knowing and I, I, I live probably in probably just world? because we feel like he has the power to change sure. it. It's and so you sit there, you sit there and you go like, I know he can change the circumstance. So like, why don't you do it? Yeah. And I think asking those questions, like it's hard <laughs> because you don't always get those answers, you know? Yeah. And you have to sit with, I'm not going to have an answer. Maybe I'm not going to have an answer. Mm -hmm. but like, Maybe I'll I, never know. How do I move on and be this new person who still loves Jesus and who's raising a generation of three girls who I want to love Jesus. And there's part of me that's like, sometimes I grieve that my 11 year old sometimes I grieve my 11 year old doesn't do Bible drill because I'm mm -hmm. like 
there was good in that, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm not raising a girl who does that. So mm-hmm. it's like, okay, but then what am I doing? Okay. Am I teaching her authenticity? Am I teaching her who Jesus really is? So mm-hmm. that one day, heaven forbid, something traumatic happens in her life that she doesn't have the falling apart reckoning that I had to have. Mm-hmm. If I could teach her that at the age of 11, wouldn't that change her life? to where she doesn't have to deal with it at the age of 25. I mean, yeah. I'm still trying to process, like, what does that look like? And mm-hmm. if we don't go to church every Sunday, is she still going to be an okay Christian? And, like, <laughs> what does that look like for her? But I feel like it's just different. the ideology of the way that we were all raised mm-hmm. when, I mean, because we were the same way. Like, I was raised, I mean, we were there Wednesday nights. We were there yeah. Sunday mornings for su- Sunday school, mm-hmm. which I was actually just talking to Stephen about this the other day. I was like, Sunday school is so bizarre to me because it's like you go to Bible class, then you go to the main service. It's like the mm-hmm. service before the service, kind of yeah. weird. Uh-huh. We were there like four or five days a week. Sunday My parents church. were on staff. <laughs> I mean, it was the whole thing. And yet I didn't really like when I look at my life, like I, I actually started really finding God in the last couple of years. Yeah. And it's like, I always loved the Lord. Sure. I was a Christian. I was baptized. I did all the things again. Mm-hmm. I checked all the boxes. I don't think I love the Lord. I did not have a personal <laughs> well, relationship no, no. with the I Lord. I mean, we say yeah. that. The I just wonder if I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You yeah. believe that he's real. The I son of God. Real, yeah. But I didn't love him like I love you or love my husband. Like, but it's because I didn't, I didn't know go him. to the secret place. I didn't yeah. know the Lord's yeah. characteristics. Maybe like a, more of a child childlike faith you know yeah like you're yeah I love Jesus I do all the right things but then something happens like when you get married it's a different kind of love it's like yes I love you but like no I love you mm-hmm. yeah you know, it, it's different because you've walked through all the trials and you've walked through the pain mm-hmm. and you feel it differently yeah and no, I know we want our kids to like learn like to hear the Lord's voice that's something that like you know I've tried to cultivate in Taya like even mm-hmm. just laying down when we're going to bed and her going to sleep and laying there and I'm like picture father God what does he look like mm-hmm. what's he wearing what does he say to you you know kind of teaching her the to know him as a person yeah you know and to start to train her how to hear his voice because I never heard his voice mm-hmm. I never I didn't understand Same. the spirit so living older, inside of me yeah. you know things like that where it's just like also the Lord's been so kind to you know relay like how you live is a direct reflection of me Mm. you know even like the things I say unkind to myself when I'm feeling down like mm-hmm. I don't feel pretty or if I feel he- like I mean Tyler was like Ashton like your daughter will go as you go mm-hmm. so if you teach her how to love her body if you teach her yeah. by just speaking life over yourself yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> and life over our family like they it's learned behavior yeah. our kids have learned behavior so you just living and like serving through what you do I mean mm-hmm. it's just kind of crazy like when you sit there and you go what we're doing in our lives it's like almost like a direct reflection of the battles we fought, Mm -hmm. you know, and you're over here going, you run an organizing company and Mm -hmm. it's like, think about how controlled that is and how, you know, and you sit there and you go, you have to be Mm -hmm. right. You have to be. And that's such a gift and a ministry to other women, you know, so talk a little bit about that too and how you've translated, you know, all this hardship into, I feel like I feel you get to control this environment a little bit more. And that mm-hmm. has to be somewhat freeing for your personality for type. Sure. Because yes. I know <laughs> that like my, like you, my husband finds freedom in that. And it's like, yes. I don't understand it because that's not how I find my yeah. freedom. And that's okay. But like God has a, it's, and that right there, that's a gift from him. Because to me, it's like we forget in our pain, those things that God knows that you love yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And think about how many people strike out on starting businesses and starting things like that. I mean, so I sit there and I go, wow what that's such fruit from your you know even just being real with yeah. God saying yeah. like I don't get it he's near to the brokenhearted mm-hmm. and it's just to me it's like I feel such a freedom in what you get to do because that's him going I love you yeah. and I see you and my husband's had to refocus my intention on those things it's like I didn't ask for a business mm-hmm. you know I'm like I just want a baby but thank you for the business right I mean you know <laughs> I mean, that's just how <laughs> I take felt this baby you know y'all yeah, take this uh-huh. baby but like I was the other day sitting there going I've had the ability and the pleasure to like lead women and love on women my whole life Mm -hmm. and I was like taking class and I was like why have you given me all these women Mm -hmm. you know and just going thank you God because I've had to adjust a lot of my like a lot of who I am to having a grateful and thankful heart Mm -hmm. even when I wasn't thankful I started speaking you know those who enter your you know I enter your gates (laughs) with thanksgiving I mean like I I, I praise no but I mean I did I did I mean that's how I felt but it's like doing the mundane scriptures and just sitting there like saying God change my heart Mm -hmm. shift my heart Mm -hmm. replace my heart of stone with the heart of flesh which is I'm on that kick with the pink 
that's what pink means mm-hmm. and um <laughs> you know just going <laughs> lord and it was it softened over time mm-hmm. but it didn't happen overnight, overnight. it was an, a process of going god like i don't feel thankful mm-hmm. but i'm gonna say i'm thankful yeah. i'm gonna say that you're good and reveal your goodness to me you know yeah. and so talk a little bit about this really cool business you have yeah i, was, I was just had a thought me and my husband were talking about just literally like two days ago he's totally like a glass is half full kind of person he's that's how our husbands are Instagram. he's, so like he's a seven yes oh steven's a seven and he's like let's go party like why so would does he, he ruin like, your organization it's not like he ruins it he's learned but it's also <laughs> he lives in me where i'm like this is our lives and so he's learned uh, okay he's way better well but yes there's times for sure I my middle Steven, child Steven is just rebels. Like Brandon. <laughs> he's like yeah i'm not doing it <laughs> uh, but I also get paid for it, and he works for me now. So it's kind of True. like you got to start learning how to yeah, do this. A yeah, bit yeah. Like Tyler and I, like, you know, I'm more the wild one. Tyler's more structured, and I mean, her wing is a seven. My so wing's she's an eight wing okay. seven. So I'm like, okay. I got the one. fun yeah. vibe too. I mean, it's wrecked a one uh-huh. like him because I came in and went. You're too set in your ways, bro. Yeah, we're you know? going out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we're like relax. <laughs> yes, uh-huh. life is like yeah. We're gonna be cool. I'm a three. I'm a three, but I don't know. But I also like identify a lot with like the one qualities and like eight ones and three is like tight. Like I remember when my life was imploding when I was like a young teenager, I used to like you could not see my floor Mm -hmm. of my room like growing up. And then as like as soon as everything happened with my family, that's when I became like a neat freak. But I think it's Mm -hmm. because like I was trying to control what I could could because that was like the only thing in my life I could control. And then suddenly I got really organized. And so I still am that way. (laughs) Yeah, I guess it did. (laughs) So So yeah, go ahead. So he's glasses half full kind of person all the time. And I am a glasses half empty. Like a one is more like I see the negative before I see the positive. Hmm. And a a lot of people see that as a negative thing. And I, even to him the other day, was kind of arguing of like, Brandon, it's not a negative thing. Because like I walk into negative all the time. So like what I'm walking into (laughs) is a mess. Every single (laughs) day I walk into (laughs) messes. And especially in your brain. Yes. Like you're like. It's You're just mess. a fixer. Yes, I'm a fixer. Tyler's yeah. a fixer. Right. It's like I, get it I walk into a mess, but but when I see the mess, I'm not mad about it. So it's like someone mm. who's a glasses a half full kind of person, when they hear a negative person, they just hear like, you hate it. You're mad. I'm like, no, that's just, that's how I see it. I'm mm. not mad about how I see it. Mm, I'm good. telling you my first way that I see it is the negative of it. But I'm like fixing it in my head. I'm like, okay, well, that looks terrible. But what if we did this? So it's like, mm. I'm going to start You're offering low, solutions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I promise I'll get high, but I'm not going to start high. So that's why we're, we clash a lot because mm. he starts high and I start low. And he's like, why are you so mad? I'm like, why are you so happy? Like, <laughs> let's bring it down a little bit. It's true. To Tyler yeah. and I have similarities in that. We can really relate to that. I'm not super, super high because I've got still some of the like, you know, you the eight. Mm-hmm. I have the like strong yeah. whatever but mm. he definitely isn't like a hype guy mm-hmm. steven's a hype guy all. steven's yeah, always yeah. hyped and, and he's, that can be he's like that. i think it's like the seven thing they don't mm-hmm. like to deal with like they don't. the yes. negative stuff or mm-hmm. deal with things that are unfun mm-hmm. and so it's like yeah when you're kind of going okay well what about this and that you know yes. steven can be like stop freaking out yeah. and i'm like i'm not i'm he's not like, freaking it'll out be fine i'm like no but what we have to talk about it but, but there's like, still okay, a process how will it just be fine how do you get to it being fine exactly right i mean it's true because i think that can be triggering for people like you or you or me because I'm over here because you know I I still am like a realist I'm yes. like you yeah. can be hype but like yeah like how are we gonna get there you know yeah I'm still like that still totally. I'm going like I'll be hype but I'm not like in the clouds mm-hmm. over here going oh yeah it's gonna be great we'll do it like right. I'm an action person <laughs> yeah like yes. get it done you know how is so, it gonna get to great <laughs> yeah yeah so I think that's something where we clash but I what I do every day is I walk into a mess so the fact that it doesn't stress me out like a majority of people, I'm like, oh gosh, like the second when I do interviews, I actually ask people like, are you a visionary person? Like when you walk into a cluttered pantry, do you need to take it, get the clutter away in order to see the goodness or can you see the goodness with the clutter there? Because, and a lot of people can't, most people on my team, they have to have it clear, a clear vision is priced like scripture and preaching and what I'm saying. I feel like I can hear it. It's like, got to get the clutter away to be able to see like the vision, I literally have the vision with the clutter. So it's like, I, did y'all ever watch? You literally just spoke prophetically over yourself. Okay. (laughs) Tell me. Which is crazy. (laughs) You literally said you still have vision amidst the clutter. Yeah. That's like life. That is life right there. I mean, that is literally so prophetic. Because that's true. So Mm -hmm. many people, because you are a warrior Mm -hmm. and you hid his word, you hid his word in your heart. So he's literally, you're speaking that as what you do in life. He's going, you still see me. 
Yeah. All this stuff is just noise. Yeah. Wow. Sorry. Just gotta yeah. like break. I got cleared out. Who, I got who knew that organize, organizing could preach. just it's going preach? preach it's so cool. I'm sorry. I'm, okay. I'm being no, a growing up. I love it. I, I could hear it coming through, but I was like, I don't know what I'm saying. But I'm I feel like, like I can hear it something. Okay, cool. <laughs> There's something. Had to bring that up. Uh, what was the ch- There was a movie, The Queen's Gambit. Did y'all ever see that? Yes. yes. That was, was so good. Yeah. So. When she lays in bed at night and she's like seeing the chess yes. pieces move, mm-hmm. that is what I do in a space. Like I literally oh, walk cool. into a pantry and it's a gigantic mess. And in my brain, I'm like cereal. Da, 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 da. I take the clutter and I like make it right. Like I try mm. to fix it in my brain. And so that's what I get to do every single day. And I love I it. Love I that. literally love it so much. So when did you actually start Hello Happy Home? Um, so five years ago on March 11th. So almost five years. Almost five mm-hmm. years. Yeah. Wow. That was my first, like, I pressed post on Instagram and I was like, I guess I'm doing this. And I was still working at the church at the time, part time. So okay. I was like, well, I don't know what this is going to do. Yeah. I did my sister-in-law's closet and I was like, a, I got to post something that yeah. I like know I can do something. Mm-hmm. And then someone was like, I want you to come and I'll pay you. And That's I was amazing. really, really cheap. And I remember I walked out and she had paid me, I think, $100 to help her for an entire day. And I cried oh. in the car holding a hundred dollars and I was like I cannot believe someone just paid me money to do something that was the most fun thing I've ever done I love and I was that. Like, that is so cool that because that would be like so walking happy. me into a prison cell if someone made me <laughs> oh, come yeah. into a house and clean that all day like I know most people <laughs> but no sure. I love it yeah. because you know like it's just so we women need that women need to help other you know women and I'm like it, I love it because it's like I feel like we in that in the culture we grew up and it's like celebrating what other women are good at mm-hmm. was is a hard thing and yeah. to me I'm like come out because you want to hide the stuff you're bad at you want to hide the stuff you're bad at. yeah and if you're like you know well and i yeah, love I'm seeing I, all their mess i love so much <laughs> seeing like women chase their dreams i'm like big yeah. into like Go you for can it. do Empowerment. anything yeah. yeah and so like that's like the coolest thing ever that like makes me cry i'm also the crier she doesn't really cry <laughs> but like cry you're not a crier you know no. i think a lot of that i cry i cried the other day and I, I cry happy great. tears i cry, she cries tears. All the time. I cry all the time it's yeah. great i think that you know when you're strong sometimes you put like Yes. When you go through things, when yeah. you're str- like, mm-hmm. I don't know, but you're a strong personality. But I'm I, strong, but I like, I just, even that, it just like made me so happy. Like think of you with a hundred dollars, just being like, I'm living my passion. Yeah. And like, I think that's so cool when you can figure out a, such a, a way gift. to make money at what you love. Like that's amazing. Yeah. So cool. And it's like, when I think about the other people I'm employing, like I'm employing 10 people who are one of the girls on my team, she pays for four of her kids to go to private school because of this job. And wow. I'm just like, how did I do that? Like, I don't even know. At what point I went from the hundred dollars in my car to like employing ten people, I my husband quit his six figure job to work with me, and mm. Monday my sister in law started working for me full time. I'm just like, how did I, how did this happen in five years? Like I don't even That's know. And I amazing. Feel like we're still at the ground floor. Like the dreams and the plans that we have, even just for this year, are beyond what we're doing now, which is wild. wild. And God is so cool because, like I said, He cares about what we are passionate about, and sometimes when you're in the middle of everything, you don't see it yet you don't see it yeah. happening like you're saying I couldn't foresee and I see a lot of things ahead of time but there's been certain things God has hidden mm-hmm. you know for certain seasons of life and um yeah so what are just like I know quick fast tips that you can give some women that feel overwhelmed at home even without having you come in like yeah. do you have some like quick tips that you could share yeah so start small so you're gonna like you know don't start in your pantry don't start in your mm-hmm. garage don't start in your closet <laughs> like you need to start <gasps> with like a drawer a closet. Like, oh, like a junk drawer junk or something drawer. yeah or your hair or makeup drawer something that you see all the time and you're always like this is a disaster but it needs to be about the size of like your eyeballs <laughs> yeah. something that you can handle and that you can control and yeah. that you can feel accomplished at the end I was gonna say like a, a small win yes you, know? you need a win because it's a snowball and like we're able to give our clients wins every day but I don't come in and do an entire house in a day like I can do yeah. a garage in a day like a garage that takes you know 15 years to create the clutter and we can clean it up in one day wow so that's that's a, amazing a win and that makes someone feel like okay now I can tackle this space so it's a mm-hmm. snowball so if you can start with something that you can accomplish in a day and finish it'll feel like okay that wasn't that bad now I'm gonna go do that cabinet in the kitchen or I'm mm-hmm. gonna go do our linen closet um so start small okay. see I love organizing um and I'm like big into like systems and stuff like that. But I will say, like I said earlier, I feel like my house is closing in on me. And I think the reason, well, number one, our family has grown, but our house and our space has not. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. then you have, a, uh, you have family. Yeah. And every time a kid has a birthday, I start to get panicked. Oh, yeah. Because I'm like, why are we bringing in a bunch of stuff? Like right before Christmas, I took three 
Tahoe loads oh to God. Grace Obsessed. because I said I told my kids I said Jeez. listen yeah I will tell everyone that they're not buying you one present mm-hmm. until you figure out what you can get rid of and Addison was like I don't want this I don't want that like she's she's like she's like, <laughs> she's like the yeah. seven type she's like getting rid of stuff because she wanted new stuff mm-hmm. Brody my oldest is like borderline hoarder everything I've told you special. this and he's uh, everything special everything that's my favorite special. that's my favorite thing like his grandpa will give him like give him like an Altoid container an empty of like coins mm-hmm. well, then I can't throw away the Altoid container because, because it's it's you know yeah. so anyways I think we you answered the, my question on Instagram a mm-hmm. few weeks ago but for the people listening that have like a bunch of kids and toys and like mm-hmm. a smaller space not a lot of storage kids that don't want to ever get rid of anything yeah. like what what are your like rules for those like the way you handle that stuff yeah, so I tell my clients, if you teach your kids now, they won't have to hire me whenever <laughs> they get older. So, like, let's save your kids some money and teach them now. <laughs> and it's not going to be overnight. So, like, when people are like, oh, your kid's so organized. I mean, my oldest, my 11-year-old, is a carbon copy of me, like, in all the good and the bad ways. So I have to constantly be like, Jesus, don't let her deal with what I deal with sometimes. Like, I see that in her, <laughs> um, the perfectionism and all the things, good and bad. But my middle child is Brandon. She... Mm-hmm. Her pajamas are on the floor every single morning, whether I spank her or don't spank her. I don't spank her for that. But I'm just saying, like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Whatever I do, her pajamas are on the floor every single morning, even though they have a drawer to go to. So she's mm-hmm. that's what sh- how she is. My mm-hmm. three-year-old, yet to be seen. But I think teaching them. So it's like, yeah, it's going to be a process. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to say, where do your pajamas go every day for probably the next five years? Mm-hmm. But I hope (laughs) that I'm teaching her and instilling the importance of, I'm not saying that. And sometimes I do have to tell, remind her, especially it's like, I promise I'm not trying to be mean. Yeah. I'm trying to give you tools to help you. Like, Mm -hmm. because yeah, maybe your apartment one day when you're by yourself is going to be a mess, but hopefully I've instilled enough in you to where you're like, okay, this is a mess and I can't handle it anymore, but I know how to clean it. Yeah. I mm-hmm. know how to get back and not clean it so that it's clean. I also try to remind them of that. I'm not trying to be like, everything needs to be clean because people are coming over and da 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 da. It's clean because it's it helps our hearts. Like it's, it's peaceful. Like, there's peace. Oh my gosh. Big when you time. come into this house and I mean I here is an example. Mm-hmm. When my kids go to other friends' houses, every single time, all all three of my kids will come back and be like, Oh, they need you, mom. <laughs> and I didn't say that. Mm-hmm. I didn't say like, Oh, was there room? I'm I didn't ask them those questions they can feel the difference. Yeah. It's like, oh man, yeah, I know. Like you don't always like having to pick up your toys and put them back in the people and animals bin and the Cinderella Barbie bin. But like when you went to your friend's house and they couldn't find their Cinderella toys, that's, there's like stress in that. There, I, like I feel that so heavily because like I'm such a like, I like peaceful environments. Mm-hmm. And so when there's a lot of clutter, yeah. I get, it makes me yes. like stressed out. It. Like mm-hmm. I cannot relax, yeah. which is kind of where we're at because like I'm, sometimes feel like did you ever see that reel where they're like brooming the water like into the ocean she's like this is what I feel like in my house oh, gosh. that's oh, yeah, that's, that's like kind of what I feel like mm-hmm. a lot of times because yeah, I'm really picking up after four <laughs> people all the time mm-hmm. and so the kids will help like do we do like a 10 minute cleanup at the end of the night and I've got bins labeled and things like that but um but like they play better too mm-hmm. like when sure. things are picked up and then they come into the clean space like the start of the day mm-hmm. to play they play way better than like as the day's gone on if yeah. toys are everywhere then it's like they don't even know what to play with yep. anymore I you try know? one thing I really try to teach my kids and again it's all the time so like just so people are not like yes I'm gonna clean when we do um playrooms and digressing but when we do playrooms parents are always like well it's not gonna look like this forever I'm like nope it's not like tomorrow this might be a mess again but guess what Every single thing that got thrown on the floor has a place to go. Yeah. So you're setting up a system that you're going to have to deal. Like you're going to have to keep it up. I'm Mm. not in your house every day. I can't be like, okay, kids, over the loudspeaker, Mallory says clean up your toys now. Like put them (laughs) in the bin they go in. Yeah, (laughs) I'm not there to do that. That's now on you. But I've set it up to where if you make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do and clean up. Yeah. Everything does have a place to go. So it shouldn't be hard, but yeah, it's going to be a mess. Like I don't make my kids clean up the Legos every single time they dump them out. That's, that's not practical. That's not realistic. Right. But after they're out for a couple of days and I know they're done playing with it, I'm like, okay guys, it's time to clean up the Legos. Let's move on to something else. I don't have to clean up the Legos because they know where the Legos go. And -hmm. I think a lot of times with kids stuff, people think my kids just make a mess. And I'm like, okay, hold on. If there's no systems in that playroom and they're shoving things on a shelf, whose fault is that? Yeah. 
it's not theirs. And they don't they know don't where to know put where things. I mean, it's true. Goes. I'm someone that gets super overwhelmed by it. And I have had people help. And, you know, our playroom does have things where it's labeled you know, they and, go. Yeah. and it is, it takes effort sure. to 100%. say, hey, Taya, to stay on kids. Like you're saying, yes. it's a consistent thing. And yes. I get frustrated with that process because I'm so busy. Yes. And everybody's busy. You know, there's stay at home moms are busy. And so I'm not using that as a cop out exactly. Yeah. But I know that. When I stay on top of her saying, no, that goes there, no, that goes there. And it's exhausting because I don't yep. have the mental capacity to do it at the end of the day after working yep. all day. But it really is, on the, you know, us to be like, hey, you know, do that mm-hmm. again. Yeah. Do it again. This goes there, not there. And it's it's tiring, it's but you have to, it's like, like you were saying, anything. It takes our effort yes. mm-hmm. for and our homes to, to have systems. And you have to decide if you want that. So I'm not saying you have yeah. to do that. No, if you don't right. want that, awesome. But you can't complain that your house is messy if you don't do it. Yes, <laughs> That's totally. Why it's totally. like give and take. Yeah. So So how um, we've been asking kind of like all of our guests this. um, And it's funny because most of our guests, I guess, so far have all been like working moms. Mm -hmm. um, But how do you balance it all? Like being a working mom, being a business owner, a wife, like all the things that y'all have going on. Well, so (laughs) I think it's funny because I think that question is a loaded question. Oh, yeah. Because I don't believe balance exists. Yeah. Yeah, So I just like to hear, Okay, what what do you do? Like, do you do anything? I mean, do you feel like you're swimming? Right. Do you feel like you're drowning? Yeah. How do you do it? Or is that every day? (laughs) You know, every day is different. That's my own. I find the video. I'll send it to you. (laughs) I think the last person you all had on, I just watched a video and she was like, every day I deal with it differently. Or she said something about that of like. Yeah, she said, she said some days, like I have to be really dedicated yes, to my family I and other that. days I'm really dedicated to my work. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just, I loved what she said. I you can't have everything every have day. She said Having that. She says you can't, you can't have it all. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I think that anyone that's an overachieving person, like you sound like that too. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm that way is mm-hmm. I, I had to learn that my intentional time was more valuable than um, being all things every day. Mm-hmm. And that's what I struggle with the most because yeah. I want to be mm-hmm. fully in, in every area and I want to be the best at it. Yep. And so yeah. it's very so if I exhausting. Can't be best, I want to do it. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I'm, I, f- I felt like I'm drowning a lot because mm-hmm. that's my goal and that's not realistic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have know? to have grace yep. for yourself yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and schedule out things. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to play with you and I'm going to do this right now, even though I don't want to, or mm-hmm. if I don't want to, or I don't have the capacity for it. I have to be able to be like, sweetie, I don't, I don't want to do that right now. And like, I don't, I've, sometimes I have to be okay with myself being like, you know, my, I have a three year old. So we have an 11 and a nine year old. So like a whole different time of life. Mm-hmm. They want to, you know, color and do videos and stuff. But it's like my three year old still wants to play on the floor with princesses. It's called At Barbie hell. Day, yeah. It's, I mean, <laughs> that's what I literally call it. the pretend play is <laughs> one of the hardest <laughs> things. Know, which is so crazy because when my other ones were little, I remember loving that, but we're just past that. And mm-hmm. so now that I have another one that's like six years behind, well, we're you're also a business over. owner now. You're, you're oh, running so a business. Busy. You're busy. Oh you don't gosh. have time to sit there and do, pre- look at my brain yes, cannot mentally. compute. Mentally. I try to like yes. figure <laughs> out things like with my younger kids, which Hunter is still too little, but like, like if there's things like I hate, I don't love pretend play. So I try to figure out things that like I actually like to do to do with them. Yeah. So like Brody, now that he's a little older, he loves battleship or like mm-hmm. Addison's been really into this card game called old maid, which mm-hmm. is still probably too old for your three year old. Yeah. Um, but like, or like I like to build towers. Yeah. Like I'd rather build blocks. Yes. So like things oh, yeah. like that with she a three year old, I'm like, I'm like, I'll build you a castle with the magnet tiles and then put the princess in the yes. tower. Like, yes. <laughs> you know, and I, do think there's, I do like <laughs> even saying like at times when you don't have the capacity not allowing the guilt to like yes. come over yes. you I mean yes I do think I mean our children are our priorities it's how we live our lives mm-hmm. but there are some days I've said Taya I literally am spent mm-hmm. you know I love you but I need a moment come cuddle yeah, with, with me come, come with sit me. with me or like you know and I mean <laughs> I think there's what I can give there's freedom you. Yeah. in that mm-hmm. because I you know when That's you right. are a person that wants to be all things in all areas you honestly feel like you're failing when you say that or you're failing yeah. when at least I do I don't want to speak for you but I know that yeah. I feel like I'm failing her when mm-hmm. I'm not giving her everything and that's part of sharing the gospel with her you're not gonna life doesn't look like that right. and yeah. she's a sing, you know yeah. a single child right now and so mm-hmm. She wants what she wants when she sees it. And mm-hmm. Tyler is always laughing at me because I'm like, I'll be like, you just don't get everything you want, Taya. And the he's like, day. she's seven. Maybe you should. <laughs> it's yeah. so Life funny doesn't give you that. Right. Like, yeah. she, yeah. Tells, truth. she tells Taya that. And then the other day we were driving over here like last weekend to hang out. And I was frustrated with Steven about <laughs> something. And she goes, mom, you just can't have everything that you want every single time you want it. And I was telling them that, and she's like, oh, I'm sure she got that from Taya. I was like, thank you, Addison. I appreciate it. <laughs> she's teaching you in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Strong, I know. strong mom, strong daughter. I, I mean, you it. know, and, yeah. and I do believe there's a, it's a good, you know, you had to be real, but then, you know, but I yeah. want her to learn those things. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I mean, I sugarcoat every time. It's like, uh, my kids will be in therapy. 
and I'm okay. I need to be okay with being like, yeah. listen, I'm not going to make the, all the right choices. You're not their end all be all. No. no. And I'm not, not supposed your job. to be. And I need to apologize when I mess up. That's and right. then sometimes I'm going to forget to apologize. And one day they can go to therapy and they can deal with it. But I'm going <laughs> to do all the things that I know how to do now. And apologize later. Well, you're, like, t- well, you're also taking away, away the pressure of you and Being like, perfect. you know, and, and also learning that our children are not, not our own. Like that's mm-hmm. been one of my hardest lessons is going, God, she's yours. Mm-hmm. You know, there's things that have happened to her um, that I can't control yep. that or how you know, she sees it or, or how she sees it. it. And I then just control that. Yeah. Bad, you know, things that are not ideal. You know, yeah. they told me she has vitiligo. She's had spots creep up on her body. I mean, you're just like, mm-hmm. Lord, why do these things happen? Yeah. But she has her own process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She is the, a child of God. And I have to learn how to let that go and realize how I love her, how I teach her, even in these hard things of her going, why do I have a white spot here or there? Mm-hmm. Just yeah. not, you know, learning to like not emphasize those things you know like mm-hmm. help will help her yeah you know, just mm-hmm. we're doing we're imperfect it. people raising children yes, yeah i think one of the last things we just wanted to ask you is um how do you battle like battle and bloom is our our like slogan mm-hmm. for the year what are some practical ways or things that you do or don't do to mm-hmm. battle each day because you know we're, we're obviously we we, yeah. we we know we're in a war mm-hmm. a spiritual war yeah. we've, we've discussed that so what are some things that you could share with others that you do i think Focusing on not trying, for me, it's a battle to not try to do it all on my own. Mm-hmm. So it's like if I didn't have Brandon, who is my seven and my cup <laughs> runneth <laughs> over person who I hate sometimes. <laughs> my cup runneth over. That. Makes you have fun. <laughs> makes yeah. You, yeah. And, you know, reminds me of the truth. Mm-hmm. So it's like having someone who I guess can battle for you. So it's like I, maybe the way that I battle is reminding myself that I'm not in it alone. That I, I'm not just mm. standing in a field with a sword facing an army by myself it's like mm-hmm. maybe looking back and being like no there's you behind you that was like prophetic too because <laughs> oh, yeah. maybe brandon's yeah. that person yeah. on earth for you but like yeah. your heavenly father is battling with you too you're not yeah. alone in a field with mm-hmm. a sword right you know you, all you see when you're facing forward with the sword for a battle is what's in front of you but if it's like maybe just looking around like mm-hmm. you're not by yourself so you can move forward because there's people with you, you know, mm-hmm. with the sword ready. Yeah. Well, this scripture, that. before we close out, and I want to close out a prayer if that yeah. works. But uh, earlier when you were talking, I was like, I've got to read the scripture. Like there's some scriptures. And a lot of times when I pray or read things, I know that the, like I always think, OK, this might be for the person tomorrow. And then I kind of just let the Holy Spirit lead, which is funny. So this scripture, it hypes me up. And I really think I mean, I'm sure you've read it. You'll love it. But it's like I probably know it. You, I'm sure you know it. I'm <laughs> sure you know it. Flip to it but right now. Even, in the Bible. Re- even reading it last night, I was like, I think this is for her. But I didn't you know, I don't know you. Mm-hmm. And so. I was like, it's for me. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, going to take, take it. Yes, Jesus. Yes and amen. <laughs> but this is, I think, one of my top scriptures. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run your race that you may that you may lay hold of the prize and make it yours. Now, every athlete who goes into training conducts himself t- temp- temperately and restricts himself in all things. They do it with a, to win a wreath that will soon wither. But we do it to receive a crown of eternal blessedness that cannot wither. Therefore, I do not run in with uncertainty without definitive, definitive aim. I do not box like one beating the air and striking without an advers- adversary, but I, like a boxer, subdue my body, handle it roughly, discipline it by hardship, and subdue it for the fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and things pertaining to it, I myself should not become disqualified. And it's just cool because it's like anytime you're an overachiever, you realize I'm reminded, Lord, I'm on, I'm, this is the game of life, and I'm running a race. Yeah. And very mm-hmm. few make it yeah. to the end. Mm-hmm. And I think that just gets me like hyped up because the reason why very few make it to the end, because they're A, they're looking at the temporary, not the not the or the, the seen world, not the unseen yeah. world. And these mm-hmm. temporary things that we battle on the daily are literally fleeting moments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like only those that can keep their eyes fixed on the prize, which is the Lord, and subduing their flesh, disciplining it, which is the hardships we walk through, the tests, going, God, I'm running on this narrow path. It's a narrow path for a reason. Yeah. And very few actually make it to the end because mm-hmm. they can't see the end. Yeah. And so I love that because it just reminds me that that's what's happening yeah. every mm-hmm. single day. And some days I just fall off the narrow path. Right. <laughs> and then I get back on it. Let's start again. <laughs> Let's start again, you know? Yeah. But I mean, I think that... I lost sight this I've morning. I've lost sight, <laughs> you know? But yeah. it's funny because I'm like, I love it. Because so you good. seem to be such an, a, just a high-achieving individual. And it's like, 
you know, you have no problem with discipline. No, no. Right. <laughs> right. And so it's, unless it's working out and then I've got to get myself under control. Come to bar method. <laughs> you yeah. Come to you class. Need to go to you class. That's right. I need to go to bar method. I love that scripture. It's in that's first so Corinthians good. nine. Um, I talk about all the time. It's like people run this race to win like a trophy, something that's fleeting, but yeah. yet we're really running this race that nobody can see. That's it's right. very few believe in. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why, you know, sometimes you're like, why am I running this? Because the weight of my human experience right now is too great to really think about what could be or what hasn't mm -hmm. happened yet. It's more like, you know, a cross country runner. Like yeah. They don't mm -hmm. really, they can't see the finish line. That's I mean, right. I can't understand that. I'm never going to do that, but <laughs> me neither. I'd rather sprint. Yeah. They so that's, yes, me too. I want to sprint, but it's yeah. like, actually I you can't need to train my body to be a cross country runner, which and is a different kind of training. Mm -hmm. It's a, exactly. So and it's endurance and it's, it's just hard, yeah. but thank you so this. much for, thank you for being, being here. Us. We appreciate fun. you. I'll tag hello, happy home in the show notes and over on Instagram and all that. Make sure you check her out. And if you're local, you should hire her. She's yep. amazing. Um, and I think Ashton wanted to close Close us in Close prayer. Us in prayer. Yeah. All right. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for this special time with our guest, Mallory, Father God. I thank you what you're doing in this life, Lord. I thank you what you're doing through her and in her, God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you continue to empower her as she walks um, on the narrow path, God, just doing your work, Lord. And I thank you for all of the listeners, Lord. And I pray that you'd bring freedom through this, Jesus. And we just thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.